Oh, let me go behind the thing. You know what I'm saying? It's announcement time. Let me move this chair out the way. So, announcement uh, time. We're going to start off with the uh, announcements. And, uh, Sabbath peace, Sister uh, Donna and uh, Brother Arya. Sabbath peace. I look a little dark on the camera, Donna. What? Oh, I ain't got my lights on. You can't boom, blind boom, me with boom. them things no more. Huh? But yeah, you can't blind me with them things no more. <laughs> the reason why I can't see. Let me see how that look. All right, that look a little better. There we go. That look a little better. Um, so uh, today is not technically the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is going to start. Uh, Saturday evening, so the 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 evening after after the Sabbath, and then um, it's gonna continue on um, until the first day of the week or Sunday evening. Um, so what we gonna do today is we gonna take today to midnight to daylight. What you talking about, Sister Sharon? Sabbath peace, Sister Danielle. How y'all doing? Um, so today we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about the day of atonement. Um, so you remember we talked about the day of trumpets. We did that last week. Uh, so now on the 10th day of the month, which is the 24th for us, right? But on the 10th day of the month is going to be the day of atonement. And it starts the evening, um, from even to even. So it's going to start the evening before the 24th for us. Um, so we're going to, we're going to take some time out to kind of discuss what that means, um, how we should look at it. Uh, I hope that we'll get a chance to, um, it's, it's so many different directions that you can go with a lot of these days. So it's a lot of things that I hope we'll get a chance to cover, but we'll kind of see where everything take us. What's going on, boy? How you doing? Doing all right? How was school? All right, good job. We'll talk about it later. Good job. Um, any other announcements? Fellowship, fellowship. What what we call um, fellowship hour is uh going to be tomorrow at four. I'll probably have this on YouTube, so we're gonna say it's gonna be on the Sabbath at four Pacific time. Somebody told me on YouTube, I always say tomorrow, but I release this the morning of the Sabbath and they don't realize I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? They think it's on Sunday. So it's on the Sabbath at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hey, baby girl, how you doing? Okay. Um, any other announcements? This is where the pastors usually do like a prayer request or something. We do take prayer requests, though, on a serious note. All right, so let's get to it. Um, Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the, t uh, on, the on the camera, but no peace to the, to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. What's up? Why you always mess with my candy? Listen. Yeah, they hooked me up at work. Boy, woo, they got all I got all I hid the Mexican candy I like. I put it right in the thing. They hooked me up. Uh, Brother T, you having audio issues? Test, test? Uh-oh. Look like we lost Brother T. Let's bring him back. I'm right you here. You back, Brother T? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So can you see me. Let's get what happened? You all right? Yeah, can you see me? 
I can see you. I can hear you. You good? Okay. All right. Is it a delay or something? Can you hear me? What's going on? No, I think you was uh some happened. I think you got disconnected, so I had to add you back in. Oh. All right. Well, let's let's read about the Day of Atonement real quick. So this is uh this is uh last week. Last week we we read about the Day of Trumpet. So we're gonna kind of pick up right where we left off in Leviticus. It's Leviticus chapter twenty three. Give me about verse uh what twenty six. Leviticus chapter twenty three verse twenty six. Let's see what the book say. It's important that we know what these day. By the way, I got the calendar up here so you can kind of see it. But um, if you need the calendar, just go to the website. It should be at the bottom where the video is taughtofyah.com. That's taughtofyah.com. If you have any issues, you can see the phone number that's on the screen. Any questions? One thing we always say is do not learn from anybody online if you can't question them. If you can't call them and have a conversation with them, pray with them, talk to them, ask questions about what you learned, ask questions about what you believe. Listen, it's tedious and I get it. I understand why these brothers don't put their name and their face out there. I truly get it. However, it's too many lies out here for us to call ourselves teachers and not make ourselves accessible to the people. Um, you know, I think I think there's a there's a value in that. There's, there, there's, there's a necessity in that given the times that we're in with all the deception. So don't hesitate to give me a call. Y'all know how it is. I ain't been getting a whole lot of calls lately. You know what I'm saying? Lately, it's been emails. It used to be calls. Well, these people used to call and text me to death. But now it's, uh, now it seems like it's email. And I'm not good with emails. So when y'all email me, I don't respond. But you can text this number. You don't even have to call. You can text. If you text it, I get around to it. I'll respond. I'm a little late sometime, but I'll get around to it. I'll respond. Um, but either way, whatever you need, just, you know what I'm saying, reach out. And and if you're learning from people online, reach out to them too. You know what I'm saying? And question people. There's too much lying going on. It's, the lying so bad, people don't even realize they lie. They're repeating lies that they learned and they think it's the truth. Right? So just make sure you reach out to us. We'll talk to you, me, Brother T, whoever it might be. We'll reach out and we'll talk to you. This is... um. This is uh oh yeah, and on the website you can get the you can get the calendar, download it. It should be under a link called Appointed Times. You can download it. If you have issues with the download, let me know. I think I fixed it, but let me know if uh if there's still issues. This is uh Leviticus chapter twenty six, I mean chapter twenty three, verse twenty six. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement. All right, so on the 10th day, on the 7th month. So Ethanim is the 7th month. That's the name of the 7th month. And then the 10th day, which for us is going to fall on September 24th, um, the evening before. So it'll start the evening, September 23rd, and it'll go on to through the day of September 24th. But watch, we'll, it, it'll explain it to us. Watch the book, sir. There shall be a day of atonement. It shall be the holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls. And offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. You shall do no work in that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever soul it be that shall be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever That's right. So he said, you don't know, afflict your soul in that same day. day. Books say you're going to be cut off from the people. When the books say cut off from the people, that means you had to leave. You had to get your butt out of there. All right, keep going. Watch this. And whatsoever soul it be that does any work in that same day, that same soul will I destroy from among his people. Right. Our law would have us not work on this day. Right. We are supposed to afflict our souls and we supposed to we supposed to, you know, rest from our labors. Right. That becomes important. A lot, a lot of people look at that and they don't see the logic in it. But. We don't we don't talk. Let's let's keep going. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even to even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Right. So you see how, how <laughs> remember we were talking about how, how, how the day starts or when the day starts. I think it was on the fellowship call. But on the, during fellowship hour, we were talking about, y'all missed it, by the way. The ones who missed fellowship hour last time. 
You know what I'm saying? Me, Sister Chris, and Sister Pamela, we were going. We was like fellowship five hours or something. We was going on that thing, though. But uh, <laughs> we was talking about um, when the day start on one of the calls. Mm-hmm. And the day starts, we was talking about how the day starts during the even, right? The evening. Mm-hmm. And so this is this is kind of one of the things that Brother T was referencing this scripture right here where it says that it starts on the ninth day. So remember the the day that we celebrate and it's the 10th day of the month. He said start on the evening of the ninth into the evening of the 10th. Right. So that lets you know that the day is a full 24 hours or what we would consider 24 hours from even to even. That is how you determine a day. Right. Keep going. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. So we good. We can stop right there. So in a, in a nutshell, what we're seeing is, first, you got to afflict your soul, right? That's talking about fasting, right? So when they say afflict your soul, it's fasting, right? That's fasting. Fasting is, you know, not eating. Um, so first, you got to afflict your soul. Then after, after afflicting your soul, he said, you know what I'm saying? You can't work. Right. So for this whole period. So that's what we're looking to do. The reason why I want to start off here, of course, is when we when we when we um, when we memorialize what the most high God is having us memorialize for the day of atonement, which we'll get into a little more what it means. But when when we when we memorialize this and we celebrate this, um, I want us to be prepared for what we need to do. So what that mean is we need to not eat. Right. We need to we need to fast for the the full period right so it would be saturday evening right saturday the 23rd um the evening going into um sunday evening which would be sunday the 24th we'll spend that entire period not eating and we should dedicate ourselves to prayer um and kind of get into what it is it, it's telling us to afflict our souls and what what the, the hebrew word for afflict there is kind of like uh it's like submission, right? Or humbling, right? It's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? You kind of, you, it's like, it's almost like punishing yourself into submission, right? The way the word is used, like sometimes the most high God use that word to say, you know what I'm saying? Like he's going to afflict us of other nations. In other words, he going to make us become humble to those nations because we wouldn't humble ourselves to him. So it's the same way we we're bringing our bodies, right? Our flesh into submission to the most high god is what this is about all right that's that's the reason that we fast so we bring our bodies through punishment into submission to the most high god and what is that punishment if you see it that way right if you kind of look at it in the sense of punishment what is the punishment we are refusing to nourish our bodies for that time period right and so the best thing to do is to that well we'll actually talk about it so first of all we got to prove out a few things right we talked about fasting we talked about prayer we talked about all these things so we need to prove things out so we can understand it so let's go to uh isaiah 58 let's let's make sure that we can make the connection because really what we just read i want to be very precise what we just read was afflict souls it don't say nothing about fasting right and even if it did say something about fasting how we know that when the books say fasting it ain't talking about moving quickly you know what i'm saying you really don't know right so it's like we have to make sure that we can prove all these words out Make sure we can prove out what the understanding is and how we should take it. So this is uh, Isaiah chapter 58. Is Isaiah chapter 58. Give me verse one. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression in the mm-hmm. house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They asked Right. So me, you got to listen to what he said. See, a lot of people don't understand when, when the most high God is mocking us. Right. They don't understand when the most high God is kind of making a joke or, you know what I'm saying? Or, or saying something that's fine. I ain't going to say it's a joke. You know what I'm saying? But when he, when he's saying something that's, uh, that's clever, you know what I'm saying? Or when he's making light of, of the thoughts that the thoughts that we have, right. You got to look at what he said. He's like, oh, no, they come to me every day. Almost like they are people that love their God. You know what I'm saying? Almost like this. Look, the way they come to me, you would think they righteous is what he's saying. Right? You would think that they obey the law of their God. Read it again. Watch this. 
Spare, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook mm -hmm. not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Keep going. Wherefore have we fasted, say they? Look, he said, wherefore have we fasted? Like, right? So this is the word, fasting. Right? That's the word I use. Let's see what this word fast is associated with here. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Right? So you can see fasting and afflicted the soul, they, they, it's, it's shown together. So they asking the question, the this is the, the writer Isaiah, uh, Isaiah is kind of explaining to us. He's giving the prophet to the people and the most high God said, these are the questions. This is what the people are complaining to God about. So God is hearing people complain, talking about, look, why are we even fasting? If you don't even listen to us, why are we afflicting our soul? If you ain't even paying attention, that's the complaint of people to God. So people are out there fasting they afflicting their soul, and the Most High God is not hearing them as their perspective. That's their story. That's their testimony, right? Watch what the Most High God response is, though. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure in exactly. He all said, "Look, orders. in the day of your fast, you do what? You find pleasure and exact all your labors." He said, "You find pleasure and you exact all of your labors. Pay attention to that, right?" Because remember, in our law, in uh, Leviticus chapter 23, it just told us, it said two things, afflict your soul, and then what else? Don't work. Rest from your labors. So he said, instead, when you fast, you exact all your labor. So you rest, but guess what you do? You go get you a servant or find somebody else to do the work for you. He said, that's not appropriate. Most high God is telling you that's not appropriate. He said, that don't make no sense. That's not appropriate. He said, you mess around. You go and find your joy. You rest. Find your joy. You do something to make you feel good. But then everybody else, you making them work. Keep going. Watch what else. It's important to understand what an appropriate fast. When we talk about fasting, if we're going to fast, this might be some people first time fasting. So now we got to know why are we even fasting? What does these even mean? When we say fast, what does fast mean? How do we know that mean don't eat? Right? How do we know? How do we know fast and afflict the soul the same way? So we got to go through it. Then we got to understand what is the appropriate fast? What's the fast that the most high God look at and say, you know what? I respect that. Right? Keep going. Let's look. Yo, know, you fast for strife and debate. And to smite with the fist of weakness, wickedness. Mm -hmm. you shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for men to afflict their soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under, under him? Mm -hmm. Would thou call this a fast and not acceptable day and, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou look, so he's telling you, you go without eating. He said the appropriate thing would do is to take the food that you would have eaten and go give it away. He said that's the fast that he calls for. Right. That's the type of thing that he's looking for when he's talking about fast. Right. Instead of exacting your labors to somebody else, release them, give other people freedom, freedom. Right. You know, what? I'm going to take a day off. Y'all all take a day off, too. I'm not going to work today. Y'all ain't got to work today. either. He said, that's the fast that the most high God is looking for. Keep going. Watch this. And to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thine house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him? 
and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. He said that you hide not thyself from thine own flesh. That means from your own people. Right? You don't just stay in the house and hold yourself up in the house and try to hide from everybody. And you don't say, oh, well, I'm just fasting. I'm hungry, but let me just sit here. No. He said, that's not the fast I'm looking for. Fast I'm looking for, you going out, you know what I'm saying? Giving the food that you would have ate, you inviting some people into your house so they can eat. Right? That's the fast that he looked for. It's important for us to understand that. Right? Now, you got to understand the, the difference. The fast, he's just talking about general fasting here. You got to understand the difference with the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement, our whole nation would have been fasting. So it, it wouldn't have been appropriate to invite somebody else in to eat because they, they would have been keeping the same law in our land. Or, or uh, you know, it wouldn't have been appropriate for anybody at any time to try to exact their labor to somebody because the whole land should have been, you know, um, uh, out of work as well. But we don't just fast on the day of atonement, right? There are many times that we'll fast and we actually are going to, uh, next year's calendar, we actually going to introduce, um, additional fast days from, uh, let's actually get it real quick. This is, uh, Zechariah chapter eight. Give me, maybe it's Zechariah chapter eight, verse four. I feel like we just looked at this. I feel like it's verse four. It's Zechariah chapter eight, verse four. It's probably not four. It's probably like seven. It's early though, whatever it is. Should be talking about the fast also. Thus says the Lord of hosts, there, sh there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. And every man with a staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord of hosts. If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of his people in, the, in these days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. And I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Thus says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the fountain of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. For before these days, there was no... Scan through for me and look for where it says something about the fast. And I think it's the fourth month, the fifth month, the seventh month, and the tenth month. I thought it'd be early on, but that don't sound like it. Maybe it's not Zechariah 8. Try Zechariah 7, chapter 4. Uh, you want like verse 18. 18? Yeah, we'll do 8, 18. Okay. It's uh, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 18. Watch what the book say. And the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. That's right. The, so these are know. these. This is a prophet of the Most High God, and the Most High God is acknowledging that these are fasts that the people take. So it, it looks like this is not something that's documented in our law that we should fast in all these months. But nevertheless, the Most High God is acknowledging that these are currently fast, and He's saying, "I'm going to change them from being fasts." And then they're going to end up being feasts. So in other words, I'm going to change it from a day that you afflict yourself to a day that 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 is of joy and celebration. Right. So it's important that we kind of look at that. And I think we should take that into account. And we're going we're going to kind of apply those. It, he doesn't give us a specific days. He just said in the fourth month, the fifth month, the seventh month and the uh, in the tenth month. So, you know, what I'm saying we you know, what I'm, saying? I'm thinking we just do it on the tenth day of each month since. We know in the seventh month, it's on the 10th day. Uh, but we'll try to take a look at that. And the next time we put out the calendar, we'll kind of put those on there. So that we'll have multiple days that that we that are designated for a fast. But then we also should be just as our people were of old, where we 
you know what I'm saying? We break out a fast anytime we worried about something, anytime that we have concerns, anytime that we need to, you know what I'm saying, submit ourselves to the most high God. Um, let's go to, uh, let's go back a chapter. It's Zechariah chapter seven, verse four. Let's learn a little bit more about the fast. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even though seventy years, do ye at all fast unto me? Even Look, he's asking them. Again, this is to understand what is the fast that God respects. So he's asking the people. He's like, so we haven't got to this yet, but in our reading, we're going to get to a point where the kingdom of Judah, we just saw the kingdom of Israel get, get exiled, right? King of Assyria came, he took them out, he spread them out all over the Assyrian empire. So now what we're about to look at next is the kingdom of Judah is also going to be exiled into Babylon, into the empire of Babylon after Babylon becomes an empire, right? So this is, this is written after that. This is written after there was an exile into uh, Babylon, and now the people were returned back to the land 70 years later. So the Most High God is asking, during that time that y'all was exiled, y'all were fasting during the fifth month and the seventh month, and you were mourning. He said, during that time, do you think those fasts were unto me? In other words, do you think you were fasting to, to serve me? Right? Watch this. Keep going. Even to me, and when ye did eat, and when you did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should ye not hear the words which Yahuwah has cried by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion, every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears, and they that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as adamant stone lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath upon uh, a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore, All right. So you have to understand what the most high God is looking for. He's asking the question. He is like, so when you was fasting, you think you was fasting for me? Or you think that was the fast I was looking for? All right. He is like, no, nah, just like you was fast. I mean, he is like, just like when you was eating and drinking, it was for you when you didn't eat and drink. It was for you. So this is how we know that when we say fast, it's eating and drinking, right? The Hebrew word that's used for fast, it means like covering your mouth, right? So it's basically saying nothing is going in your mouth, right? You're not eating or drinking, right? So when he's talking about, he's like, when you eat and you drink, it's for you. And guess what? When y'all was fasting and you wasn't eating and drinking, that was for you too. That ain't had nothing to do with me, right? And so... He went on to explain what he wants them to do. Deal justly. Have mercy. Right? He said, listen to my law. Listen to the, listen to the prophets that came before whom I sent my spirit. These are the things that the Most High God requires. These are the things that he's looking for out of us. And we can't fast and pray and and participate in 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 these appointed times and do all these things as if that makes up for the fact that we not keeping this law right as if that makes up for the fact that we don't serve the messiah in truth right these are the things that the most high god requires of us this is what the day of atonement is about when you think about the day of atonement you think about the first thing if you think about atonement at all most of us from the Christian church now, you know what I'm saying? When we say atonement, Jesus Christ, right? It's about Yahushua at the end of the day. And it may not be about Yahushua in the way that we think of and the way that we, we kind of been taught, but the day of atonement is still about Yahushua. We talked about the day of trumpets and the day of trumpets kind of signified that there are several trumpets that will go off and it, uh, it aligns us. It calls us out, tells us when we should move the trumpet. 
It sets us up for war and it blesses the sacrifice. Right. Those are the things that the trumpets did. But then we also heard that there are seven trumpets that go off when we read Revelations. There's going to be several tr trumpets. And then on the last trumpet, the Most High God is going to be calling us to gather together with the Messiah. Right. So we read that. We understand that. Well, guess what? On the day of a trump, I mean, the day of atonement, a trumpet is supposed to sound off. Right. A, a trumpet got to sign sound off on the day of atonement. I wish I knew where it was. It's a. Uh, oh, I wish I knew where it was. I can't think of it right now. It might be numbers. But in one in one of the in, in the law, it tell us that in. I think it's. Uh, no, I'll, 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 I'll see if I can think of it, but um, the trumpet got to go off in the day of atonement, period. Right. So that means that this day, just like just like we read about uh, with Trump is last week. Right. It also testifies to Yahushua in his second coming. He's going to fulfill this day just like he fulfilled uh, the day or uh, just like he fulfilled Passover, unleavened bread and the feast of first fruits and his spirit in the uh, feast of weeks. All those days were fulfilled. He's also going to fulfill these days as well. And that's important for us to understand and recognize. But we aren't in the land. Why are we fasting if he didn't accept it then? What has changed? Our our behavior has to change. Yeah, our behavior has to change. Let's see. Let's 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 talk about what changed. This is um this is Matthew chapter six. couple things you have to look at when we, and all the stuff that we just read you never heard them say don't fast right you never heard them say don't fast what you heard them say is he said why are you fasting if you haven't done the other things first that's very similar to Yahushua's message you remember Yahushua he is talking to the Pharisees he is saying anything he said listen y'all straight oh I love that man Woo! he said y'all strain Y'all strain for a darn gnat and let a camel go through. He said, you ought to done the more weightier parts of the law. Where's that at? You remember that is, Brother T? I do not. Ah, oh, man. Somebody find that for me in the chat. Oh, look like Sister Pamela found. Grab uh, Leviticus 25, chapter 9, real, I mean, verse 9 real quick. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 9. Sister Pamela, is that, uh, is that what I was talking about, about the trumpet? Somebody find where where Yahushua said uh, you ought to done the, the, the more weightier matters of the law. I can't think of where it is right now. I'm going to say Luke 13. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like I'm way off, but you know what I'm saying? I'm going to just say that. Somebody help me out. See if it's, see if it's right. This is uh, Leviticus 25. Give me verse 9. Then thou shalt cause the trumpet to of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, and the day That's of right. movement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Right. So now this is the year of jubilee, which is going to be the fiftieth year. Every fiftieth year, this is the year of release for us. This is where everybody is made free. You got to listen. It's so much in this book, but you got to understand what the imagery is. At some point. Where everybody is made free. Everybody is set free. Right? And then this trumpet blows. On the day of atonement. Watch how this stuff happens. One day all this stuff is going to play out. Well, well, and the ones well. of us that know the scripture is going to make a lot of sense. And to those of us who don't know the scripture, we're going to be standing around waiting and, and, and trying to figure out what happens. What was that but we need to be we need to have enough faith that we can look at this and be like, OK, you know what? That make a whole lot of sense. I see what's happening. This is what God said was going to happen. What did you say, Brother T? What was that when he was um, when he was going into the, the, the scapegoat explanation with the day of atonement? Was that Exodus? He said what now? You said when they was doing what? When Moses was talking about the scapegoat. That's ex that's Exodus, right? Yeah, that's Exodus 16. We're going to get to that one, too. But first, I want to I want to I want us to understand what it means to fast, like, because that's to me, that's the most important part of Day of Atonement is the fast. But I don't want us to take on something. 
right? When we when we keep the order of these days, I don't want us to take on something if we don't understand what we're doing. I don't want us. I never want us to just do stuff just to do it, right? I want us to understand the meaning behind it, what it means, and how do we make it profitable, right? So this is a uh, Matthew chapter twenty three. Give me twenty three. Matthew chapter 23, give me 23. Thank you, Sister Pamela. Thank you, uh, Sister Donna, Brother Arya. This is Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Watch what the book say. And this is the answer to Sister Pamela's question, you know, because the question ends up being, well, if we not in the land, because we've been talking, so just everybody watching in on our fellowship hour, we've been talking a lot about the law. Right. And how the law was designated for us in our land. Right. If you read, see anybody who read the law and really understand it, you see it's telling you that when you in the land, do X, Y and Z in your land, do X, Y and Z. If you do this, you will have long days in your land. Right. So everything is it's about us being in the land. It's the law of the land. Right. We don't have a land. We don't have a temple. We don't have a king. We don't have a priesthood. Right. So our law is not applicable in the same ways here. So the best that we can do in many pl places about our law, the best we could do is keep the order of the law, right? That's the best we could do. But that keeping the order of the law is not keeping, no one can boast right now that they are keeping the law in a, in a literal sense. No one can boast of that. Like when we say it like, oh yeah, we keep the law, we're talking about we keep it in the order of the law, but no one can boast that they keep the law. Because we don't have the we don't have everything that we need to keep the law. Right. So when we talk about that, we say, OK, well, a lot of these things we shouldn't be touching or we shouldn't even been doing. Like when we talk about the trumpet. Right. The trumpet was made of one piece of silver and the priest was to blow it. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to grab this trumpet and then blow, the, you know, make a trumpet out of one piece of uh, silver and blow it and call myself keeping the law because that belonged to the priest. That would be against our law. Right. So a lot of the stuff we do in the order, even tithing, right? You know, the, the church charge you tithe. Well, that's they they tell you the law is done away with. That that piece doesn't belong to a pastor. That belongs, that don't belong to a teacher. That actually, according to our law, belongs to the the Levites and the priests, right? And to the poor. You know what I'm saying? You give it to the poor and the widows, right? But it 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 it, it belongs to the oppressed in the land to the destitute in our land and it belongs to the um to the levites and the priests you can't just go give it out to a pastor or to a teacher oh yeah brother philip i appreciate what you're doing i'm gonna give you the tithe well no that is it that that would be inappropriate according to our law right but now we can keep the order of it right a, a man or a woman can keep up keep the order of it and say okay well you know what pastor i'm gonna give you 10 percent of what i'm doing in the order of a tithe that's not a problem, but we need to understand the difference. We just we we can't just keep doing things and not understand what we're doing. So when it comes to the fast, right, the question is, why would we fast, right? And if we're not in the land, well, fasting wasn't for the land. And we look at what we looked at from um, Zechariah, right? Zechariah was saying when y'all was fasting outside of the land, did y'all think y'all was doing it for me? Right. He didn't stop there. He told him. What you should have been doing is having mercy with your people, not hiding your flesh from your people, right? Understanding and paying attention what the prophets were saying, right? He given, he said, these are the things that were important. You sitting here fasting, but being the same old evil rotten butt. Let's keep going. Look, this is, uh, this is Matthew, this is Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Watch what the book says. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment. But understand the imagery. Let's let's not speed through that too quick. Let's understand the imagery. He said you pay tithes with what? Uh, with mint, anise and cumin. Right. So what the imagery that he's given to you is these are all very small things. Right. So the imagery that he's given you is. OK, let's understand the concept of tithe. We don't have to go read it, but let me let me explain to you all quickly the, uh, the concept of, of tithes. Right. Tithes is when you take a tenth of what you own and you you offer it up to the most high God. Right. So we have coins or we have dollars. Right. Paper dollars that represents wealth or money for us that we can easily break down that value, take a tenth of it 
and, and give it away. At different times in our history, a person might have 10 sheep and they would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. OK, I'm going to take the 10th sheep. And that's what I give to the most high God, because that's a 10th. So now if you take that imagery and apply it to what Yahushua is saying, he's saying you are taking your seasonings out your cabinet and you measuring it. And you say, OK, that's a 10th. I'm giving that to the priest. OK, and that's a tenth. I'm giving that to the priest and the Levites. OK, and that's it. He's saying you are going painstakingly taking the seasoning out your cabinet and getting the 10th of all of them and giving it to the most high God. Right. So he's saying you going over and above, boy, you getting the 10th of everything. You are being extra. Right. And people see that as look how righteous I am. Then he comes back and he says this. Watch this. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These are you have done and not to leave the others undone. Right. So now look at what he said. Justice, mercy, and faith. You should have done nils without leaving the others. A lot of people, like a Christian, look at that and be say, see, most high God told you that justice and faith is more important than the law. That's not what he said. Well, Read it again. Most high God. That's not what he said. Read it again. Watch what he said. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you have done, you, these ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. Right? So he said, you should have done this and still done the others. So that's why I wanted to go here, Sister Pamela, when you asked the question, well, why do we fast when we is in the land? If you read what we just read in Zechariah, what he was talking about, he is like, listen, why are you fasting and you're not doing the other pieces the way to your... Let's go back to Zechariah. So I want to make sure we understand it. This is Zechariah. Um, this is Zechariah chapter uh, uh, seven, verse. Uh, let's start back at the beginning. This is Zechariah chapter seven, verse four. Book saying, all that you do, get an understanding. Right? What was that, Ecclesiastes? Yeah. And everything that you do, the book say, get an understanding. I don't care nothing about this other stuff, man. I don't care about anything going in the world, whether we understand it or not. But when it comes to this book, make sure we get an understanding. Right? Because by doing that, man, we gonna be. it's going to give us a peace. It's a peace that can't no body take from us nobody can take this piece from us when we understand this book then came the word of the lord of hosts unto me saying speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests saying when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month even though 70 years did you at all fast unto me even to mm -hmm. me and when you did eat and when you did drink did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves Mm -hmm. Did ye not hear the words which Yahuwah has cried by the which, uh, wait, by the which Yahuwah has cried by the former prophets? When Jerusalem, he said, you wasn't listening to the former prophets. Watch this. When Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof and about round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain, and the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, "Thus speaketh Yahuwah of hosts, saying, Execute judgment, execute judgment." judgment. True judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. So and now, isn't that similar to what Yahushua just said? Justice, mercy, and faith. Right? So he's telling them the same thing. You going, you doing all this fasting and mourning these 70 years that I had y'all exiled out of the land. Did you think that was to me? You wasn't executing judgment. Right? You wasn't showing mercy. You didn't have no darn faith. You should have done these while also fasting. Right? And so that's what we do. Right now, we, we're learning how to be righteous, how to have justice, how to accurately, when we talk about justice, how to accurately, accurately review the testimony of the Most High God and then apply it to life. That's when we, on our fellowship calls, we can get deep and we can make things practical. Even here, I try to make it practical, 
right? We try to talk about real life decisions that we can make, how we should see things in real time. Because if we make it practical, that's judgment, right? When we look at when we look at people and how people react and what's wrong and what's not wrong, then we apply the book, the wisdom of the law to it. That's judgment. He said, execute judgment. Then at the next piece, he said, have mercy, right? When it comes to me taking a loss or me taking a, uh, let's say a gain, me having a gain, right? And I say, you know what? I don't want that gain. I'm going to take it. That's mercy, right? Mercy is love for our people. This is what the book is requiring of us. And this is what the most I get. And this is why we want to fast. And when we fast, this is why we want to understand why we fast. Right. Grab. Matter of fact, let's grab Matthew. Grab. Let's go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter six. Matthew chapter six. Give me verse one. We're going to start at the beginning because Yahushua say a lot here because fasting. He's going to tell us about praying before he tells us about fasting and fasting. A a lot about fasting is praying. Right. When Yahushua fasted 40 days, 40 nights, what was he doing? Well, I mean, that man was praying. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Right. So this is Yahushua. He's, he's telling us. He said, pay attention. When you say take heed, whenever whenever the book say take heed, you know what I'm saying? What's some other ones that it say? Uh, be not deceived. Be not deceived. When it say low, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Low means look. You know what I'm saying? All that. Whenever the book use, use these type of words. It's important that we perk up and we start paying attention. Like, okay, whatever it's about to be said next, whether it seem important or not, it's important. He want us to pay attention to it, right? So he said, take heed that what? Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Right? So he's, he's, he's setting off the, 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 the beginning of what he's saying at this point. I'm, I'm not going to say at the beginning because technically it started in about chapter five. But he's he's setting off this portion of the conversation and he's saying, listen, pay attention. You're going to mess around and not have treasure with your father. No reward with your father in heaven. Right. He said, you're going to mess around and want to get your reward now. So what he's saying is, if I have alms, when you say alms, it's talking about uh, gifts or, you know, kind of giving money, the, the context of giving money to the poor. Right. So when people walking around and you like, okay, well, I'm going to feed the poor. I'm going to give money or any gift to the poor or anything like that. He said, don't do it for the look. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it like the God's plan. Y'all remember God's plan? God's plan. And Drake is walking around and he giving and he giving money out to all these people on his, on his video. Right? Most high God would look at that as, okay, well, you got your reward. You sold millions of records. You did this, that, and the other. Da, da, da. That's your reward. You got your reward. But you didn't get the reward in the kingdom. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do it all right so he said don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing in other words move in silence right when you do it do what you do and keep it pushing right as if you hiding it from yourself even by doing that what do we got y'all sure let's see what he said that thine arms may be in secret and thy father which sees in secret himself shall reward thee openly. That's our, that should be our mindset, right? What he's, what he's teaching you to do here is he's teaching you not to do things for the praise of people, right? It's okay. If people don't know that you're doing stuff, it's okay. Like that's, that's appropriate. That's better, right? Keep going. Let's see. It's okay. If you don't get credit, if people don't know you did it, how are you going to get credit? So when you look at when you look at it's like, oh, I do all this stuff for people and don't nobody ever acknowledge me and do all this. Right. If that's your mindset, fix it. Fix that. Pray about that mindset. Right. Do it. Complain in secret. Right. 
and then do it in secret. But do it. Don't put yourself in the position. I ain't doing that. Don't nobody ever give me credit in you. No, no, no. Most I got because you'll get the credit. Listen, you can get the credit. You can. And it'll look nice. God's plan. You might sell a million records, right? But you got nothing in the kingdom, right? Even if you obey, you get in there and you just get in by the skin of your teeth, right? This is what when we talk about, when we always talk about our law will make us great in the kingdom. Would you, our law, our law, you, you're not going to see that under our law where it tell you, you know what I'm saying, do stuff, you know what I'm saying, and let everybody know you're doing it. Our law tell you to be generous to people just on the, just on the humble. Our law tell you, look, in the, in the Sabbath year, don't even, look, don't even touch your, your, your field. Let your field grow of itself. And the poor, the hungry, the animals, everybody can eat of your field for a whole year. That was our law. Right? There's no glory in that. Because everybody got to do it. What is the glory? Right? If the whole land got to do the same thing, what glory is it? And that's how the Most High God wanted. You shouldn't be looking for the glory. He should be getting the glory. All right? Keep going. And when you, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Right? Uh, People out there, they praying. You've seen it in church. They praying, oh, well, you know, um, everybody hold hands now. You know what I'm saying? And they stand, they want to be in the middle, got the camera on. You know what I'm saying? Laying hands on people. Oh, I'm a lot of slapping people with dark. All that stuff is foolishness. But it's because they want to be seen. They want to, oh, let me have the best prayer. These people rehearsing their prayers. They in the mirror. Well, first I'm going to hit them with the, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm going to hit them with the, it's like a rap for them. They practicing battle verses of prayers. Right? It's a mess. It's foolishness. But this is what the Most High, this is his advice for us, right? Watch what the Most High say through Yahushua. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when you pray, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. That's right. Right? So when when we pray, pray, it should be a secret. Right? That's why That's why when we, uh, I mean, we pray together on fellowship hour because it's, it's a little bit more of a, of a cozy group. But that's why with this that's accessible to anybody, when anybody can just click on the video and just see, I don't, you know what I'm saying? No, we're not praying on this video. Shut the video off. We'll pray out. As we've been doing that since probably since we started. Right? Because I take this stuff. I'm superstitious about this stuff. I take this stuff serious. When I say, most of our God tell me, don't pray in front of people, then I'm scared if it's something in me that want to pray in front of people. I got to, every time I want to pray in front of people, I got to be like, yeah, this thing, you know what I'm saying? Let me think about this. Why do I want to do this? I prefer for somebody to ask me to pray. You, you will very rarely hear me volunteer to pray in front of people. Very rarely. Right? Very rarely. I had a sister come over the other day, and I'm praying with her baby. They talking. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, because I'm nervous about it, right? I know that she know I'm going to pray for her daughter. I know, I know she know that I got to take the baby. But it's like, all the time I got to check it. I got to think about it. Why, it. why am I doing this? Am I doing it for her or am I doing it for me or am I doing it because I'm obedient to the most high God? Okay, cool. So what I do, I sneak off with the baby when nobody was paying attention. My wife, her talking, they sitting there talking. I grabbed the baby. Oh yeah, let me just hold her and just snuck off. Went into a room, me and the baby by herself. We pray and then we let it go. The mindset, that's, that's me because I'm superstitious and I'm, I'm fearful of what the books say, right? So I'm looking at how do I do this in a way that I check my own motives to make sure I'm not doing this for the wrong reason. To make sure I don't get any, any vain and empty glory for it and mess around and like it. Right? Mess around and fall in love with people falling in love with the wrong thing. Right? That's the mindset that, the, that Yahushua is trying to tell us. He's looking like, listen, when you do this, do this in secret. Move in secret. You don't need everybody to know what you're doing and how you're doing this, that, and other. Just do it. Right? Keep going. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions 
as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you are have need of before you ask him. After this, right. So when you think about it, you think about the Catholic Church, right? You look at like you look at like the Catholic Church, and you look at it. You you got the uh, baby. What they had? What do they call them? Because you know you used to be a Catholic before I saved you. Would you what would the what what they what they call it? The the things the thing where they they pray, the Hail Marys. They do the Hail Marys and you, the beads. the rosary. Rosary got the beads on it, and you got a whole bunch of beads. You know what I'm saying? And they do it, and don't they count it? They count it. They like and how many? How you how you figure out how many you supposed to do? But you just keep going like it ain't, is it a standard of how many are it just like, hey, whoever can do the most. And you just keep going until you complete the whole thing. Okay. All right. So, so she, what she explained to me is because she's a, our Catholic expert here. So what she explained to me is. Is that you have you have the the rosary? They got beads on it. So you got little beads, and it's supposed to be ten of them. And then in between the the next set of ten is a big bead, and the little beads is the the Hail Mary, whatever that is. You know what I'm saying? So look, you Hail Mary. Mary is the mother of Yahushua, right? So they tell you Hail Mary ten times, and then when you get to the big bead, what you do? You do one Our Father. So do you? Each time you're doing, you're repeating the same thing. I don't know what the hell Mary prayer, but oh, Mary, you are so great and gracious, right? Or whatever, right? Idolatry is what it is. You know, that's idolatry. How you hail Mary? I don't make no darn sense, right? When you talk about hell, that means bow down. So you bowing down to Mary, right? Is what they doing. So you, you do that quick prayer because she said that's a quick one. So you do the quick prayer 10 times. Flick the beat. Flick the beat. That's what the book is talking about when they say vain repetition. And these are the bozos that taught our people how to believe the book. And we got to sit here and we got to accept this stuff and look at it. And when the Pope come down and he got on his big white, you know what I'm saying, dress with all the darn gold. He, look, you think these rappers got big gold chains? Go check out the Pope and his jewelry. Big old gold chains. Hanging from them, they want to. They got something to say about us. You might have got it from us. You know what I'm talking about? But leave it alone. But now we got to try to give him some respect. Oh, that's the Pope. Got some hard people look at. Oh, well, the Pope is in town. Oh, the Pope. I can feel the grace in the air. I can't stand Christian boy. He Christian be getting under my dark skin. <laughs> Christian boy. Woo, woo. I can hear the grace in the air. Goodness gracious. But even the Christians that are Protestants, right? And Protestants comes from the, the, the idea that they, you know, protested against the Catholic Church. Even Christians that will bash the Catholic Church all year. If you tell them the Pope is in America, you're going to see that they're going to have respect for that. Please. I tell the Pope to a darn faith. You ain't you in a darn cult, boy. And you ought to be holding them people accountable that's touching them boys. Release the files. Elon Musk did it. So that's what they do. They ended up doing the rosary, right? And they repeat vain repetition. They repeat empty. Vain is empty, right? So they're repeating empty stuff over and over again. Empty stuff. But they're not the only ones. It's a lot of them, Right? It's a lot of them. It's a lot of religions. It's a lot of different people that do the exact same thing. It's no different. Hmm? Anime. What anime do? Oh, yeah. All that stuff. All oh, these oh, other yeah. Buddhas. She's talking, huh? she talking about Tina Turner. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, she was on that, yeah, that Buddha stuff. Keep going, though. Watch this. Let's see what else y'all are trying to teach us. What verse we up? Uh, eight. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which are in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, in earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Right? So he's telling them, he's like, listen, before you even open up your mouth, most of our God already know what you need. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the one they talking about. That's the only one that's biblical. Right? But he didn't tell you that prayer so that you repeat it every time. He just told you, don't say vain repetition. Then, then they, what they go and they turn around, they, they were, first of all, they create a prayer for Mary, hailing Mary, which is ridiculous. Then they going to come and repeat the prayer that he got. That's not why he gave you that prayer. So you repeat, he was giving you the format of the prayer, right? He was giving you the format. If you look at the format, and we talked about this before, if you look at the format of what he's looking at, you acknowledge the most high God, right? You confess sin. You make your request. Right. And you give glory to the most high God. Right. That's the format that 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 he's trying to show us through that prayer. Like these are the key components. If you add these key components, man, it's simple. You ain't got to spend a whole three hours praying about something. Just hit these key components. Make your darn request. Hit these darn components. You'll be all right. He already know what you want. Oh, we got grab uh grab Romans chapter eight. We're going to come right back. But give me Romans chapter eight, verse twenty six. Give me maybe verse 25. Where's uh, the boy? Yeah, uh, uh, Zar? He here? Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the right? Spirit itself this is Paul talking. Prayer. Paul said, look, we got infirmities. In other words, we got weaknesses. And sometimes we don't even know what we should be praying for. And the spirit helps us. Watch this. We know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And he, he says, says sometimes that thing gets so bad. The spirit just tells you, mm, 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 and you just groaning. He's letting you know that you don't even know what you ought to say. All you do is just groaning sometimes. But that's the spirit moving. Most high God don't need you to say something. Just pray. So the, the point of that is you don't have to put in your mind to repeat the same thing over and over and all this stuff. Make your darn request and go. And if you can't think of nothing to say, just darn grown. That's the spirit moving. Right? He know what we need before we even open our mouth. What do you think prayer is about? It's about humility. It's the same thing as everything that we're talking about here. It's about bringing yourself to subjection is all prayer is. If the most high God already, look, if he's telling you, God already know what you want before you even ask for it, but still ask for it. What'd that mean? <laughs> if I went, listen, if I went and I go to my job and I say, I already know you want to raise, but still ask me for it. Go ahead, ask me. How how are people gonna look at me? Like you jerk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You jerk. You just want that person to submit to you. You just want that person to feel subservient to you. Uh yeah, that's what the most high God is looking for. That is what he's looking for. And until we accept that, right? Because if when it's when it's filled, I'm a jerk for sure. Cause I ain't God, right? If I try to do that to somebody, that person is my equal. I ain't God. I ain't. I don't. I didn't create the earth in, in six days and then rest on the seventh. So I don't have a cachet, nor do I deserve that glory, right? However, when it comes to the Most High God, that's the work I put in. I deserve that. So yes, I know what you want, and still ask for it, boy, and ask for it again, cause you. Because, listen, he tell you in a different place, we ain't got to get it, but he tell you, keep praying for it. Don't just ask for it once and expect to happen. Keep going. Keep going. Keep asking for it. Right? That is humility. That is us bringing ourselves in the subjection of the Most High God. That is what prayer is about. Prayer is not about getting what you want. 
Prayer is not about telling God something that he don't already know. It is about making sure that you are subjecting yourself to the most high God. It should be a humbling experience for you. Let's go back. This is Matthew chapter six. Where we leave off? Uh, verse 13. It's Matthew chapter six, verse 13. Watch what the book say. We're on 14 now. Verse 14. Watch the book say. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Mm -hmm. If you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Mm -hmm. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites. He said, look, when you fast, we finally get into what we're talking about. When you fast, be not as the hypocrites. Let's see what the hypocrites do when they fast. Of a sad countenance. Look, like walk around with a sad countenance. Look. <sighs> oh, what's wrong, brother? Oh, I'm fasting. You know, just a little weak today. <laughs> I've been eating 24 hours. But praise, praise God. Praise the Lord. Walk around with a darn hunchback. Oh, well, you know. No, God, God's, God's being good to me, though. I tell you, it ain't even that bad, really. Oh, hold me up. Hold me up, sister. It ain't even that bad today, you know. Just, uh, just ain't eight in a couple days. That's all. You know what I mean? So you look at it. He's looking like, stop being ridiculous. He said, don't be walking around with a sad. If you fasting, don't walk around with a sad countenance. In other words, when they say countenance, it's talking about face. Don't walk around with a sad face, with a, fat, a sad disposition. When you looking at it, everybody look at you and be like, Oh, he messed up. I wonder what he looks sick. That should not be people's response to you. Right? Keep going. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hip hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So now what did he just say? He said, if you fasting, don't take your butt outside looking darn ash. Your comb made your hair ain't darn comb. He said, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Go out there looking good. You know what I'm talking about? Come out there, you know what I mean? I'm all right. You want people to think it's a regular day for you. Because if they don't know what you're doing, then the most high God is pleased. It's when people start knowing what you're doing and giving you glory, that's when you're at risk. You're at risk of liking what the, the glory that they're giving you more than the glory that the most high God going to give you. And when you at that, are at that risk, that's what he's trying to protect. He's giving you these instructions to protect you from your own selfishness, from your own pride. Because we'll start to like when people hold us up. We have history that we read and write this moment of people. What happened to Uzziah, King Azariah? He started off good. Most high, most high God said, look, he actually did. You know what I'm saying? He did according to the most high God. He, he, he was cool. He was good. Pretty much. He, I mean, he kind of handled things. Then at the end of his life, what did he do? Book said he got filled with pride. He walked into the temple. He grabbed the stuff that's only appropriate for the priest. He grabbed the censer, tried to light it with incense, and the priest was like, no, 60 of them, boy. Listen, let's go. Get your butt out of here. I know you're the king, but you got to get out. Leprosy popped out on the king's head, and they had to hoist him out of there. And he ended up being an outcast for the rest of his life. His son had to take over for him. Right? Most of our kings die before their son take over. His son had to take over for him while he is alive. We have to understand this stuff is not a game. The most high God is looking at us and he's looking like, listen, everybody can fall. You could be good and you could still fall for pride. Don't, it's prideful to even think you can't. It's prideful to think you above that. No, put these things in practice. This is not telling you, this is not telling you that if, if people see you pray that you're a sinner, that's not what it's telling you. What he's telling you is this is the extreme version, right? And keep your, this is, this is the way that you make sure you have zero complications. 
if you pray in your own closet. Right? Yahushua himself prayed in front of people. But you'll see he also said, hey, y'all, chill. I'm going to go over here and pray. He also prayed by himself. Now, he prayed in front of people. He prayed by himself. All that. Right? Th this is telling you the best way to do it. To do it where there's zero risk. There is zero risk of you doing something for pride if nobody knew you did it. If you fasting and you're the only person that know you fast, there is zero risk of you doing that for pride. Right? It's important that we understand what he's telling us. Keep going. Let's see what else, what the hypocrites do. He said, put some darn oil on your, when he said anoint, that's oil. He said, put some darn oil on your skin. Right? How you still, you know what I'm saying? Hook yourself up. Don't be looking like, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking all musty and darn dusty. Walking around, hair ain't darn comb. It's nappy in the front and the back. Right? And you hunched over. You hungry. Face darn ashy. Elbows ashy. And you sitting there, oh, but you know, Lord, be, hold me up, brother. Hold me up. Oh, she's just a little weak. You know what I'm saying? Just a little weak today. Ain't eight. This ain't eight. How long it been? How long you been fasting? About four, about four five hours. Yo, but week like that in four hours? You ain't eating four hours, you that way. Well, you know, it's a spiritual weakness. You know what I'm saying? The most high guy, you know, you can't, you know, it just can't, you gotta hold it. Hold me up, brother. It's a little, little tough. Elbow all ashy, shirt ripped. How your shirt get ripped? Oh, just hungry. <laughs> what that got to do with your shirt being ripped? Because it's look, I want I want everybody to know I'm messed up. I want everybody to know how bad it is. You're going to do it that way. You might as well go get you a cheeseburger. Right? That's what the most high God was talking about. If you're going to do it wrong, do you think you was fasting for me? You might as well have ate. That don't make no sense. If you're going to do it like that, you might as well have ate. Right? You might as well have got you a little glass of water. Why? Keep going. Watch this. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does come. Corrupt. Right. So understand what he's and saying. He's saying treasures, but field. he's saying treasures. But but look what what he's saying. All of this stuff. He's 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 playing both sides. Right. He's showing you both sides. He said, look, the hypocrites do it and they get honor from people. That honor turns into money sometimes. Right. These people that do these big charities and all that, that turn into money. It's a lot of money that get made, especially in Las Vegas, because only oh, I think I think the law, I don't know if the law changed, but I think it used to be only like three percent of if you open a nonprofit in Las Vegas. I could be wrong about this, but at one time at three, only like three percent of what you make has to go to the purpose of your nonprofit. So it's big money in this stuff. Right. So you make it look like, oh, we're going to feed the poor and feed the hungry. Just donate to us. And then a whole bunch of people donate. And then what you end up doing is taking that money and saying, okay, I'm going to get my private jet and I'm going to set up these offices and I'm going to funnel some of this money to run my other business and I'm going to do this. But you know what? 3% of it, I'm going to go feed some people. So that's why you see these people go fly over to Africa with the private jets. They got on their nice, they got on their nice shoes, they nice shirt, they nice darn pants. They got the darn camera open. They got... You know, that's, that's, that's a $50,000 camera, right? He in the dirt, they got a, they ain't going to show it on the camera, but they got to lay sheets down for him just to walk in the dirt because he got on Balenciaga shoes and he ain't about to, you know what I'm saying? He ain't about to step on the dirt with them shoes. And then they say, action, you got the little black boy with the fly on. Now, look, the white dude, he done already sprayed some stuff on him so the fly don't come near him. And he tell him, don't put none on the African because, listen, it looked good when that fly is walking across his eyeball. <laughs> That's how he be doing. The fly just be walking. African don't even blink. The African just be, you know, that thing don't even bother the African. He been dealing with that all his darn life. You know what I'm saying? Then the white man twitching. You can see him on camera like, you know what I'm saying? He don't even want the fly to touch him. He sprayed off the little thing. The off is like an orange and green thing. He even sprayed the off all over him just so none of the bug get on him. He don't even hug the African too tight because he don't want the off to get on the African because he needs the effect. Of that, uh, that, that, that fly just walking right across the darn eyeball, just sitting there on the camera. And people, he's looking at him. Look, African got a big old darn stomach. You know what I'm saying? He just, a little boy, he's sitting there, he tell him, 
just for $1.70 a day. Little Chuko here, he can eat. And all the children in his village, they say cut. And they say, all right, boys, the little African, they push a little African back in the dirt, move the sheet up, let's go, let's get out of here. The $50,000 camera, they pack it up, and then they go and they have lunch on their private plane. Why didn't you give Chuko a darn sandwich? Why I got to give $170, I mean, a, a $1.70 a day just to give Chuko a sandwich right now and everything will be all right. But that's what they do. They make a lot of money. A lot of that money goes, the, the gas in a private jet is tough. You got to, look, a private jet, not only do you, do you got the jet itself, right? So you got the jet, but then you got to pay for the pilot. You can't fly with just one pilot. That's two pilots, Right? You probably gonna want a staff there because somebody gonna have to, you know, serve. If you got a private, nobody getting a private jet to get up and go get my own darn drink. That's crazy. I might as well fly. Out. If I fly coach, somebody gonna bring me a drink. Why would I get a private jet for somebody not to bring me a drink? That's crazy, right? So you know you gonna pay for so you know a little stewardess. You know what I'm saying? Give you a little drink, right? Then you got to pay for the gas. Biden sent all our money, all our gas money to Ukraine. The, the gas just to fill up the darn car is $6 now. So it's like, what you going to do? You have to do something. I need y'all to send him $1.70 and I'm not going to give him a sandwich. I need all that to fill up my jet. Right? That's how these people move. So that stuff probably starts like it's easy to look at the end of a thing and be like, it's evil. That's okay for sure. Yes, that stuff is evil. Of course we know that's evil. What's better for us is to look at, imagine the beginning of it. Did it start evil? Did that white man set off and say, you know what? I want to scam all these Africans and all the people that want to send money for them. Is that where he started? Or did he start probably with some good intentions? Like, you know what? We can do some real good. I have a good idea. And then it escalates and escalates and then fault you lose yourself. Well, that's what happened to these pastors. That can happen to any of us, right? That's why the Most High God through Yahushua is giving us a format and a formula to humble ourselves and to keep ourselves humble. We don't need everybody to know what we're doing. Do it in secret. The Most High God will reward you, right? Keep going. What else we got? This is the treasure that's going up, right? This is the treasure that we're going to have in the kingdom. And where thieves do break in, break through, nor stick. Wait, sorry. But lay for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's right. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Mm -hmm. If thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man. Right. No, we good. We can we can stop there. So we read that just to understand what does it look like to fast. In short, put some darn oil. You know what I'm saying? Moisturize your darn skin. Comb your darn hair. Wash your darn face. Get the sleep out of your darn eyes. The crust from around around your darn mouth. Don't be walking outside looking crazy just so people can ask you what's wrong and you can tell them I'm fasting. That's not an appropriate fast. Appropriate fast. You shouldn't have unless unless it's your yo unless you fasting with people, right? Unless it's the people you fasting with, shouldn't nobody know what you're doing. You shouldn't know. They shouldn't know. They should have to the you they should they should be begging you to eat. I like, man, why you don't want to eat this? At? Like you, they should have to pull it out of you. No, I, I can't eat today because I'm fasting. They should have to pull that out of you. But you should even be trying to avoid them situations. If you know somebody going somewhere to eat. Don't go popped up looking good. Oh, this, that, and other. You know what I'm saying? Oh, why you didn't get nothing to eat? Why you didn't order no food? Oh, I'm fasting. That's the same thing. Don't be trying to be slick. We can't be slick. Avoid them situations, but go out. Don't get me wrong now. Go out. Book say, you know what I'm saying? You should be out and about. You should be looking. You get some food and give it to somebody else. Right? But go out. Mingle. You know what I'm saying? Do what you need to do. Ded spend some time. Dedicate yourself to prayer. Focus on what you're doing. Let the Most High God work through you and submit yourself to him. But that's what it's all about, afflicting yourself, bringing yourself to submission to the Most High God. That's what fasting is. 
right? Remember the word fast means covering your mouth. Nothing. So, excuse me, nothing's going inside of your mouth. No water, no food, right? And we're doing it from even to even, right? Real quick, grab uh, grab uh, Matthew chapter 25. I want to show y'all something. Because we, when we look at this and we talk about treasure, a lot of people don't understand what what the Most High is talking about when he's talking about treasure in the kingdom, right? And there's a parable in Matthew that, that really kind of puts things into perspective. So we just talked about all those different things where if you do it this way, Yah will reward you in the kingdom. If you do it this way, Yah will reward you in the kingdom. Build up the rewards and the treasure in the kingdom. That was the whole message of, of, of Matthew chapter six. It's talking about how to invest in the kingdom. Right. Think of it like a 401k at your job. You sign into that 401k. And you know, we broke. So we don't even want to put no money in that darn 401k. Like, I need this thing now. But if you put it in the 401k, you know what they're going to tell you? You can't touch it until you retire. And that's an investment. You put it out there and you can't touch it. You don't see it. It's as if you ain't even got that money. Same thing for us. When we pray in our closet, it's as if we didn't even get that glory. But that glory and that treasure is waiting for us with the most high God. But we can't even touch it until we die. Right? That's the same. The same faith we have in investment property where all these people, uh, 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 what's the dude name? What's the dude name that I sent you that I like? Uh, Wall Street Trapper. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wall Street Trapper and uh uh what's the ones where they do the uh invest fest? All these boys that's you know, I think they doing good work and they getting people acclimated and understanding to not having a quick dollar and not seeing a quick dollar, but actually thinking about long term, right? The to make what they teaching you work, you gotta look at it and be like, I'm okay with not having it right now, I'm gonna wait for it later. If that's faith that you're doing. You putting faith in the money market. You putting faith in these instruments. You putting faith in all this stuff, right? So what the book is teaching us is put faith in the Most High God, right? The Most High God tell you that He gonna reward you if you do it this way. Put faith in that. That's an investment. Also, you investing in your spiritual investment, right? Let's keep going. This is uh this is uh Matthew chapter uh what did I say twenty five. Give me verse. Give me verse fourteen. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Mm -hmm. And unto one he gave five talents and to, uh, and to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he had received the five talents him who then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them offer five talents, made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Mm -hmm. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Into the right? The so the one that had five Lord. talents, guess what he did? Go back and read what the one that had five talents did. Also, he that had received five talents came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me. Five no, no, no. Talents. Go back to what he did to, to double up his five talents. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he he took his five talents and think of when we say talents, think of it as money. Right. So he took he took his five hundred dollars. Right. And. He, he left him, the king or the man left him with the $500. He said, listen, I'm leaving my $500 with you, right? I'm going to be back. So the one, he left $500. He's like, okay, I'm going to take this $500. I'm going to double it. So he traded, right? Think of it like the stock market, right? 
I'm going I'm to invest this, this $100 in you. I'm going to invest this $100 in you. All I need you to do is bring me back 100 and then we good after all for the money that you make. Okay, cool. Boom. At the end of the day, he turned his $500 to $1,000. He took his five talents to 10 ta talents. So then when his master got back, he was like, look, I doubled up your money. You left your money with me and I doubled it up. Right? And the master looked at him and said, you good and faithful servant, because I gave you something and you made something of it. You made more of it. The most high God has given us all something, right? These in this parable, he gave some this one person five. He gave another person two and he gave another person one. Please understand this, right? A lot of us will look at lives and we'll say, you know what? I feel like this person just had it better than me. They had more. Don't be the person that feels like you had one talent and you do nothing with it. Because the person who had five talents doubled it up. The person who had two talents doubled it up. The person who had one talent buried it, the book said. He buried it because he didn't want to lose the talent that he had. He wanted to make sure that he at least had what he had for his master. And that's the mentality that a lot of us have. Whatever I have, man, I just look, at least let me just keep what I have. And I don't want to take any risk for the most high God. Everything we should, we should be ready to risk it all for the most high God. And what does it mean to risk it all for the most high God? Well, that means I don't need the glory. That means I'm willing to sacrifice everything I got for the man. Because I know, even though I don't got a lot, I know if I sacrifice this little that I got, the most high God is going to double it in the end. Right? Keep reading. Jump back down to where he called him a good and faithful servant, the one that uh, had five talents. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. He right? Now see how he was great in the kingdom. He said, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. That's great in the kingdom. Watch this. Keep going. He also had received two talents. He that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. And his Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter right? thou into the joy of thy Lord. So now you see the one that had two, he doubled it up. In the same way, he's made great. It ain't like the most high God was like, oh, well, he brought me five. You brought me two. He's looking at you double what I gave you. You've been faithful. You're going to be a ruler over many things. Watch this. Watch the last one. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that you are a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not answered. Straw. Look, he called him what? A hard man. He said, listen. I know that you be giving people a hard time. I know that about you is what he's saying. He's saying, listen, you gave me this one talent and I know you be tripping. You are a hard man. You don't be playing. Right. He said you reap where you do not sow. In other words, you make other people. Right. You make other people do the work for you. And then you don't want to collect all the benefit. He's talking about God. This parable is talking about the master being God. That's who God is. He's a hard man. Right? He make us do the work and then he gets all the benefit from it. This guy knows that about him. Watch this. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own usury with it. Right. In other words, he said, you should have at least put my money with the with the bank. And it could have when they say usury is talking about interest. At the very least, it would have collected interest. Right? He said, I left my money to you. You put it under the darn mattress because you so scared. Right? He said, at the very least. You could have put it in a bank and it would have collected interest. So when we look at this, when we are getting the glory ourselves and we are moving around, that's because we're 
afraid of not benefiting from what the most high God gave us. And that's the same as hiding the spiritual nature, the spiritual light that comes from the most high God. We're supposed to portray that spiritual light, but that spiritual light is only portrayed when we are dimmed internally. Right? If we are illuminated to the people, then God is dim. That's the same as hiding what he gave us, the gift that he gave us, whatever you think that gift is. Right? Don't let people talk you into, oh, you know what? I could always speak very well as a child. That's God's gift to you. So you should be speaking for the rest of you. No, God might want you to shut up. Even though you can speak well, he might want you. You see what he did with Moses. Moses couldn't speak at all. He told him, you know what? Go ahead. Get out there and tell the people. So it's not like he's looking for people that can speak well. He's not, he's not looking for what you think is your gift. You use your gift to do whatever you want to do. But when it comes to doing God's business, just do it the way he told you to do it. Don't find no fancy way to give yourself glory just because I speak well. And I like when people tell me that. So I'm going to start speaking for God. No, that's the wrong reason to start speaking for God. You speak for God because there's a need and you read your book and you look at you. OK, I need to fulfill this need. Right. But you cannot illuminate yourself and dim God, because if you do that, then you're hiding what he gave. you. And when the man come back, he going to tell you, oh, OK, you could at least put my stuff in the bank. You want to put it in the bank? You put it in the bank by doing what we just read in Matthew six. Keep going. Watch this. Take, therefore, the talent from him and give it to him that has ten talents. Mm hmm. For everyone that has has shall be given, and he shall be, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away. But him that has not shall be taken away, even that which he has. Right. right. So he said, if if you if you if you show up with something in the kingdom, then more is going to be given to you. In other words, if you store up treasures in the kingdom by by keeping our law and making yourself great in the kingdom by um by uh loving our people by being generous by doing things that are godly things in secret so that you don't get vain glory from it. If you store up riches in the kingdom for doing all those things, then when you get to the kingdom, even more will be added to you, right? And he's going to do stuff for you in this life, right? But he's saying even more will be added to you when you get into the kingdom. If that's not the case, even what, if you don't have nothing, even what you don't have, even what you have rather is going to be taken from you. So you feel like, man, I ain't got nothing. Okay, you didn't know you did have some, but even that what you have is going to be taken from you. Right? Keep going. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He said you're not making it into the kingdom. Nobody gets into the kingdom with nothing to show. You're going to have to ask something. You're going to have to store up something to get into the kingdom. That comes from obedience of our, our uh, number one. Just to get in, just the bottom line to make sure you got at least one talent to get in there. You got to serve my, the Messiah. If you don't turn away from the sins that the Messiah says defile you, you're not even getting in. You're not even getting in. You want to know what those sins are? That's Matthew chapter seven. That's Galatians chapter five. That's Ephesians chapter five or six. Uh, I think six. Ephesians, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's Ephesians chapter five or six. We're going to see that's um, that's Revelation chapter 22. First that is, huh? First Corinthians six. That's first. Yeah. So it's Ephesians five then. And then it's first Corinthians six. Right. That's how you you read those. It's going to tell you specifically what defiles a man. It's going to tell you specifically what does not get into the kingdom. In Revelation 22 it's going to tell you what the dogs are doing outside. Right. All that is telling you what doesn't make it in. Right. When you turn away from them sins, then you can be confident. Right. That you're going to get in. Then from there, it determines, are you showing up with one talent or are you showing up with five talents? You showing up with two talents or are you showing up with 10 talents? Right. That's where the difference maker is. And to, to increase your talents, keep our law. Right. Keep the order of the law of Moses as best you can according to what you have written there. Be serious about it. Be intentional about it. 
right? Don't put a stumbling block in front of your brothers now and in front of the sisters. Don't put the stumbling block in front of you. Yeah, that's important because that's going to take away from it. But do everything in love, right? Prefer other people above yourself, right? Do exactly what we read in chapter uh, chapter six of Matthew. Do the, do the things that, that are in uh, chapter five of Matthew as well and chapter seven. That whole thing, if you want to be great in the kingdom, chapter five through chapter uh, seven of Matthew is the blueprint. Keeping our law, that's in there too. But keeping our law is the blueprint. That is the key to being perfect is what Yahushua tells us. Right. He said, if you want to be perfect, go sell all, everything that you have. That's what he told the man. This is the key to being perfect and being perfect. will have you at the top of the top in the kingdom. Right. It's attainable. The blueprint is here. It's all in this book. But we just got to understand it. Right. Keep going in Matthew. Let's try to finish this up. When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall he be gathered all shall be shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another. And as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall Hold the on. We got I do want to read this, by the way. Sister Pamela asked me a question. Am I speaking about dash time? D-O-B-D-O-D. -D -D. You got, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, that ain't ringing a bell for me. Explain that for me. I'll, uh, I'll get back to it. So we, we, we passed the talents, but now we're getting into the goats. And you know what? Perfect segue to get back to Day of Atonement. Watch what, watch what this is saying. Read, start, start at the beginning of this part for me. When this is funny. Matthew chapter 25, what, verse what? 31. This is Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. Watch what the book say. Pay attention to this. When the Son of Man shall come into his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be the gathered, shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd buys his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left, and shall and then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? Right. So look at the imagery that he gave us. Right. He said, listen, I'm going to have sheep and I'm going to have goat. He said the son of man going to be sitting in heaven and all nations are going to be gathered. Right. We already talked about this a little bit last week with the day of trumpets. We talked about how all these trumpets going to sound off and we're going to have this 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 invasion of this guy that's not from this world. And we're going to have these things coming up out of the ground and they're going to be attacking all of the other land. A third of the land going to die here and a third of the sea is going to be filled with blood and a third of it. So it's like everything going to be impacted, not everything literally, but every little part is going to be impacted. And then we talked about how we're going to get uh, called out of Babylon and we're going to get sent back to our land. And then the whole world at some point is going to fight against us. And we talked about my personal theory that the reason why they're going to try to fight against us is because our land is going to be the only land with resources. Right. Because the most High God told us that he's going to give us a river from our land and Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel. He's going to give us a river from our land and it's going to have a tree and it's going to have 12 fruit on the tree and it's going to heal for every month. It's going to heal. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the river itself is going to be a river. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be clean water. Uh, uh, and, and water of uh, what is it? I think it's water. I don't want to say water of life. You know what I'm saying? But it's gonna be clean water, fresh yeah, water that's yeah, coming yeah. out, and and that water is gonna heal the rest of the waters. So in order to get good water and fish and life and all that stuff out of the water, after all these plagues and hit the earth, they are gonna have to come to us, and they are gonna be looking like, ah, oh, we're sitting on a gold mine. Cause you gotta imagine, we probably gonna be selling our stuff like, oh yeah, now I'll bottle up a little bit of water for you. That's going to cost you $173 for a little eight ounce bottle. They're going to be looking like that. Now, now that's inflation, boy. Like, oh, y'all inflated us for a long time now. I'm just telling you what you think. We, you know what I'm saying? I just got to, you know what I'm saying? Who knows? 
these people going to be looking at it like, or we might just be telling them flat no. Like, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? We only, we saving, we reserving this for the people that serve the most high God. You know what I'm saying? So who knows? These people going to come, they going to all gather. That part is fact. That's battle of Armageddon. Now, Yahushua is saying, I'm going to be sitting in heaven. All the nations are going to gather. And I'm going to put my sheep on my right hand and the goats on my left hand. And he's saying, how do you choose? The people are going to say, how do you choose these people? And he said, listen, the ones of y'all that clothed me when I was naked, fed me when I was hungry, visited me when I was in jail. He listed off a whole bunch of stuff. And the people came back to him and said, but hold on. When did we do those things to you, Yahushua? When did we do those things? And he says, read what he said. When saw we thee a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came unto you? And the king shall answer, answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it to the least one of the, much of you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was mm -hmm. hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they answer unto him, saying, Lord, when do we see thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal, into life eternal. Right. So this is exactly what our priest did for the day of atonement. Right. On the day of it to grab uh, Leviticus 16. Right. On the day of atonement, the priest had to make a sacrifice. Right. So the first thing is he got to make a sacrifice for himself. So he take a bull. He take a bullock. Right. And he kills, he slays the bullet and he takes the blood from killing the bullet and he goes in. But the priest himself, before he go in, he got to clean himself up. He got to change his clothes and he got to put on special garments, the linen garments, because the priest got on these lofty garments. Right. But the book say he got to put on his regular linen garments when he do this. Right. So he got to wash. He got to change his clothes, put on the lin linen garments with the linen hat. Then he killed the bullet. We ain't got to read it all. Let's skip down to maybe verse, uh, maybe look at what I want. Maybe verse 20 something right before it, it talk about the goats. Right. But, uh, he, he, he killed a bullet. 11. 11 is where, uh, maybe a little further down than that, but he yeah. killed a bullet. He take the blood of the bullet. He go in and he put it on, on the mercy seat. He put, he sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat. Right. That was a atonement for himself. Then he got to take two goats. He kills one of the goats. He takes the blood on the mercy seat. One goat is a sacrifice for the people. Right? The bull was a sacrifice for the priest and for his house. Right? So he goes in there twice, takes it out. But then he has a second goat. And, he, and the books say take it for a scapegoat. And if you look at that word scapegoat, it's the Azazel goat. We, we'll talk about that another time. I'm not going to get into it right now. But it's the Azazel goat, right? That's a particular name, right? In the book of Enoch. So he said he take that for the, 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 the scapegoat, right? Then you got to send the scapegoat off. But let's read it. Where, where are we at? Is it 11 or further down? And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin. What, what verse is this? 11. All right. So this is, uh, this is uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 11. Uh, you sure you don't want to go before that? Before we'll do seven. Okay, this is Leviticus chapter 16, verse 7. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Aaron shall cast lots on the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. And right? Shall... So there's two goats. The lot chooses which lot is for Yahuwah and which lot is for the scapegoat. Right? Keep going. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Mm -hmm. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him 
and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And Aaron shall bring the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull, bullock, of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burnt, burning coals and fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of the sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Mm -hmm. and he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat, that is, upon the testimony that he die not. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward, and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the gold of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do that with and do that with and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. So shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Mm hmm. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goes in to make an atonement for the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out until the, and he shall go out into the Put altar the ball away. that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. When he has made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And Aaron shall Look, so this is the live goat. So remember, he cast lots. Remember, cast lots is like it's like rolling dice, right? So it's like he cast lots, and the lot fell on one goat to be Yahuwah's goat. Yahuwah's goat is the one that gets sacrificed. And then you got the scapegoat. The scapegoat is the one that gets sent away, right? So now let's let's look at the other get the live goat is the scapegoat. That's the one that that wasn't Yahuwah's goat because Yahuwah's goat just got killed. Right. Watch this. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and their transgressions and all their sins and putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And right. The so shall, shall send them away. By the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Watch this. Keep going. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the unto the goat going to do what? Shall bear upon him all their iniquities. Right. All the iniquities going to be put on this goat. All the sins is going to live on this goat. Watch this. A lot of people look. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, "Oh, the goat is Yahweh sure because it bears their iniquities." Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Yahushua is the lamb. Yahushua is the lamb, not the goat. Watch this. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto the land not inhabited, and he shall let the goat into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Let go the goat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments, which he put on when he went into the holy place. He shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his, and put on his garments and come forth and offer his offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people the mm -hmm. fat of the sin offering shall be burned upon the altar and he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought into make atonement in the holy place shall one carry forth with outside the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. And this shall be the statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be on your own country or a stranger that sojourn among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be That's the day of way. atonement, right? That's what we line up. So the goat was sent off. The priest put his hands on the goat and put all the sins of the people on this goat, then sent the goat off into the wilderness. So right. And happen. somebody had to take the goat all out into the wilderness. And when they come back, they had to clean themselves before they can come back into the camp. What are you about to say, Brother T? 
uh, the goat. They sent the goat away into a land not inhabited. That's right. It had to go somewhere that's not inhabited. So then we look at that and we say, does that fit Yahushua? No. Heck no. That fits Satan. Right? Grab Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. This is Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Yahushua just told you I'm going to separate my sheep from the goat. Why didn't he say I separate my goats from the goat? No, I'm going to separate my sheep from the goat. When we see in the Day of Atonement, both goats, you have one goat that dies, right? And then you have the other goat that gets sent away. Remember, a goat is our regular offering. That's why it's called the Yahuwah's, Yahuwah's goat. Because it's like, that's, that's the one that you're going to go for the regular sin offering. That's not special. A sin offering of a goat is not special. We read through all the, the sacrifices. That is a regular sin offering, right? So he's just saying, I want you to do a sin offering and I need this special scapegoat. And then he said, go ahead and cast the lots to figure out which one is the regular sin offering versus the scapegoat, the Azazel goat, right? Let's look at the Azazel go. This is uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he, hit, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Right? Him, so you remember, you remember the angel, right? You remember the celestial being that came down and he hit the earth and he opened up the bottomless pit. And you remember the locust came out and the locust had, it had, you know what I'm saying, face like men and hair like women and, and breast plates, plates on them and tails like scorpions and they sting people and it hurt them for five months and they all moved in unison. Like we, we didn't read it, but you know what I'm saying, we got that from uh, Joel. Um, and, and, and at that point, they was attacking the people and they wouldn't kill them and people wanted them to die. That all came out, came out of the bottomless pit, right? So that... That that's the bottomless pit that we're talking about. Now, right here, we got a celestial being that has the key to that bottomless pit. Watch what happens. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. To the that he should do what? That he should deceive the nations no more. So the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. Right. So that that dragon, which is Satan. Right. Was sealed up in the bottomless pit. Sound like he was sent somewhere where nobody inhabited. Because then all the people he couldn't deceive while he was down there. Let's keep going, though. Thousand years, he said. Uh, a thousand years he's going to be uh, sent. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, put down there. And then. After that, he got to be released for just a little short time, the book say. Watch this. Keep going. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahushua and for the word of God, and for which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Mm -hmm. The rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is mm -hmm. the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part. What he's the telling you is the judgment hasn't occurred yet. He said the rest of the dead did not live. Right. So in other words, the, the, the judgment hadn't occurred. You have to understand there are there two people are going to get risen from from their death. Right. So you're going to have our two groups. You're going to have one group that served the most high God and died in the faith. Right. We're going to be resurrected when that last trumpet calls and we all going to be gathered. Then you're going to have a bunch of people that's still on earth that either have not died yet. Right. Or they don't serve Yahushua, have not died yet. And they don't serve Yahushua. They didn't. They didn't have the faith of Yahushua. They are still going to be there because if you read the revelations, you're never going to see. The whole earth was wiped away. A big thing just, the fire burned up the entire earth. You're not going to see that. 
right? What you're going to see up to this point is that a third of this got hit. A little bit of this got hit. Some of these people got hit, but never everybody, right? So then it's letting you know that the rest of the people that's on the earth is still there. And the judgment day, the big throne where the most I got open up your book and see if you in the book of life, that hasn't happened yet. However, those that serve Yahuwah have been resurrected. Right. And they will serve with Yahuwah for the I mean, serve with the Messiah for these one thousand years. That is important because it goes back to the prophecy. We don't have to get it. But the prophecy in Psalms that says. They are gods. Yea, are gods, but you will die like men. What that's talking about is the people are going to see us like gods because we're going to have new bodies. We're going to have these heavenly bodies and we're going to be ruling in the land with Yahushua. And these people are going to come year after year. Right. When Satan is locked up and he can't deceive people no more, they're going to come to their senses and they're going to be looking like, oh, well, we got to serve Yahushua and the Messiah in the flesh going to be walking around in the kingdom. Right. This will be the kingdom that's put together before Yahushua will come. Right. So the order of things, as I read it, at least the order of things, we go back to the land. We call out of ba Babylon. We're going to have some prophets. They're going to help us. They're going to lead us back to the land. The prophets is going to restore all things. They're going to tell us like, oh, you from this tribe, you from that tribe, you from this tribe. That's your father. That's your father. This, that and the other. Yo, this is the proper calendar. Yo, this is this is how we used to set up our economy. This is how you this is how you sow the land and take care of the land. They're going to restore all of our old ways, the way that we used to do things, the way that we should have done, done things rather. Right. We're going to be in the land. The people while we in the land going to be hit, getting hit with all these plagues. They're going to come after us because we're going to have the resources because we're going to be the only ones not touched. Just like Egypt, how the most High God made a separation of us and them. It's going to be just like that. We're going to be the ones not touched. They're going to come to us. They're going to look for us to, to, to do battle, battle Armageddon. Most our God is going to come back when in, in Isaiah, we ain't got to get it. Isaiah, I think it's, what is it? 63. You know what I'm saying? When they say, who is that coming from Basra? Look, y'all sure going to come back getting heads, killing people, knocking people off. Then at the end of that, Satan gets locked away in the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit is then sealed away to all the people that's remaining that survived after this big slaughter of everybody who came to the land to fight is going to be regular people that stayed at home, people that didn't go to war, people that was just waiting for their people to win the war, and they're going to find out they lost. And they're going to be like, okay, well, you know what? We got to serve Yahushua. Yahushua is going to make them come up three times a year, just like our law say, three times a year and serve him and give gifts and make offerings. We're going to be like Levites and priests and we're going to be making, you know, serving, serving Yahushua, serving the priests, unless we are the priests. And then we're going to do it. So our entire, our entire nation then becomes the kingdom of ro the royal priesthood, as the book calls it. Right. We become a kingdom of priests. Right. A royal priesthood. Right. So our entire nation during this time is the priest. We serve with the people for a thousand years. Right. And there's prophecy in Isaiah talking about how there's going to be young children that live to be a thousand. That's what this is talking about. Right. We gonna serve with these people for a thousand years. Right. Then at the end of that thousand year period, Satan is going to be released. And that's when things are going to go haywire. And that's when all the people die. And then after that, that's the judgment. Keep going. Watch this. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. This is Less the first resurrection. He... Now notice what he say next. Less than holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. But right? Death... Notice he didn't say second resurrection. Right? There's only one resurrection. There's some people that got a theory is there's two resurrections. So it's a group of people that's resurrected then. And then another people that's resurrected to the Messiah after that point. No, no, no. There's only two times that dead people are going to rise. One is going to be the first resurrection and the one is going to be the second death. And that's what we read about a little further. We don't have to get it right now. But if we read a little further, it talk about how all the dead were risen to face judgment. He said, blessed are the people who take part of the first resurrection. In other words, the people who serve the Messiah. And when that last trumpet blow, they line up with him. Right. Those are the people that are blessed.
because they serve with the Messiah. The rest of them, they're going to be a part of the second death. So all them people that sitting around, all the people that serve us for those years, that obey God for that thousand years, all those people, they, well, as far as what I read, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? As far as what I read, all those people are doomed. As far as what I read, it may be something that I'm missing and maybe Yahushua will find a way to, you know, Yahushua, he can do whatever he want, right? So I'm pretty sure if he want to, if they do the proper sacrifice and do what they're supposed to do, he might release them, right? But as far as I read, it looks like those people are doomed. And Satan's going to come back, deceive him again. Most high God is going to bring the fire down. He's going to kill them all. And then that's when you get new heaven, new earth. At this point in time, we're dealing with the same heaven, the same earth. In other words, the same skies, the same land, same, you know, earth, world, planet, however you want to say it. Keep going. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarter corners of quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is at the is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the Why would it be so many of them? It was a thousand years. A thousand years. People living a long time, still having the same amount of babies mm -hmm. that they would in a year. Right? So now you have less people dying. Because they're not dying of old age at the same age, right? So you have less people dying and you have people living longer. And why are people living longer? No excuse. Huh? They ain't gonna have no excuse. People living longer because, well, at least I think, because we're gonna have this pristine water that's coming from our land. And we're gonna have these fruits, these healing fruits that are in my, our land. And when these people come up every year to serve the most high God, they probably are going to get some of that, that water and the fruit. And the most high God lets them live longer. Right? Just as when we came out of Eden, we had the tree of life. And people live very long time, and that lasted for a very long time. Yeah, the Enoch said something about that too, how the fruits, how the fruits like uh give life or something like that. That's right. Right. So that's 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 uh that's important for us to kind of understand when we look at when we look at the first resurrection and the second death. Remember, the dead in Yahushua are going to be resurrected. The dead outside of Yahushua are going to be brought up, face judgment, and they will burn forever. Right. The Most High God is going to put their whole body back together and then they will burn forever in that state. Right. That is the judgment. That's the second death. Right. But that is the scapegoat. What we looking at there is the scapegoat. Yahushua is the lamb. The scapegoat is the one that's locked away. He's sent to where no one lives in all the sins of the people. In other words, you see that when Satan was removed, there was a thousand years. Nobody tripping. So what that's telling you is all the sins are on him. He bears the iniquity of all the people because when you remove him, ain't nobody having no iniquity. Then the most high God let him come back just to test the people and because nobody can cheat. Right. Most high God, most high God can't set it up to where you cheat the, the whole. If that was his solution, he would have did that from the beginning. OK, just don't put the serpent in the garden. Everything would have been fine. Right. But what he was trying to do is not not to give people an excuse. What he was trying to do is even if you're tempted, you will serve me. And it's only going to be the ones in the resurrection. Right. And to go back to what you asked, Sister Pamela. So you you asked, hey, am I teaching about it looks like the date of birth to the date of death. Right. And not exactly. Right. Because it's not about from your birth to the death. It's about from the time that you repent. To the time that you die. Everything before you repent means nothing. And that's what we have to understand. Repent, right? Everything before that means nothing. And then you move on. And if you make a mistake after that, call yourself a liar. When you said you repented two weeks ago and you sinned after that, you was a liar when you said you repented. But this time I'm serious. And then you repent again. Not repent again. You repent for the first time because the rest of that stuff you did wasn't really repentant. Right. You can only repent once. Keep that in your mind.
So any other time you thought you repent, if you sinned again, you didn't really repent. You lied to yourself or somebody lied to you. Right. You can only repent one time. And so you repent until you get it right, because any other repentance wasn't a real repentance. And it's about that real repentance that you do to the day that you die. That is where your justification lies with the most high God. Right. And we could do that. It's not impossible. Don't let nobody think, oh, man, you got to repent from the whole. That's not what that's not. That's not what it takes to get into the kingdom. That's what it takes to become great. What it takes to get into the kingdom is what we just told you about. Mark chapter seven. Right. Galatians chapter five, Ephesians chapter five, first Corinthians chapter six and Revelation chapter twenty two. You look at those. They're going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get into the kingdom or what you need to turn from rather to get into the kingdom. And then from there. You add on knowledge and peace and understanding and long suffering and all these things of the spirit. You add those things to yourself constantly after you turned away from the sin. Right. First, turn away from the sins that defile a man and that won't get a man into the kingdom. And after that, you add on to these things. And by doing that, you have now resisted Satan and you count yourself worthy because Yahushua counted you worthy to be to be invited into the kingdom and that's all you need to do after that just add and get better add and get better add and get better and never look back never look back if we can do that then we good we'll be able to serve we'll see we'll see when the skateboard is sent away into into a place that's not inhabited and we'll see him come back and we'll see how the most high god deal with that boy too right the glory to be with the most high god all right any questions Say the books again. Mark chapter seven. Let's read one of them. Pick one. Somebody pick one for me. Mark chapter seven. Galatians chapter five. Ephesians chapter five. First Corinthians chapter six. And Revelation chapter 22. Right. And if you ever forget, go to taught of Yah. And right on the landing page, as soon as you go to taughtofyah.com, you'll see it. It'll say sins that will not enter the kingdom. It'll be right in the menu section. If you click on that, it'll break it down for you. It'll give you the scriptures. It'll tell you, give you a little explanation. There's a couple of videos where I go deep into it if you want more information. But everything you need is there. Get it. Is there. Get it. Any other questions? Praise Yah, praise Yah. All right, well, let's pray out.